Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be going into moral development with Unit 6, Topic 6 of AP Psychology. Morality is an interesting concept. What might appear to be a good deed to one may be an evil deed to another. The philosopher Socrates believed that evil was the result of ignorance, that people who were doing evil actions were only doing those actions because they believed to be good. Socrates noticed that people often found things good when they resulted in a positive of experience or satisfaction, and things that caused pain or suffering were bad. He argued this view was too simplistic, and if we only chased things that we perceived as good and avoided things that caused us discomfort or suffering, we would live an empty life. Today, though, we're not here to debate moral philosophy or to get into the intricacies of ethics. Instead, we're going to be looking at how the concept of morality develops in individuals and how that concept of morality changes over time. To start, let's go back to Lawrence Kohlberg's theory of moral development. Remember, we first talked about the different levels levels of Kohlberg's theory in our Unit 6 Topic 4 video. Kohlberg's theory consists of three different levels and six different stages. The first level is pre-conventional morality. This consists of two different stages. The first is punishment, obedience, orientation. Here morality is often defined as what you can get away with. There's a fear of punishment during this stage. Children are individually focused during this stage and rewards are important to the child. The next stage is instrumental exchange orientation. As the child becomes older, they focus on following the rules. Here the child is driven by self-interest and external reward. From there, we move into the next level, which is conventional morality, which, just like the first level, consists of two stages. The first stage is good child orientation. Children follow rules to gain social approval from other individuals. What is good and bad is driven by social approval from others. Next is law and order orientation. Morality is set by what is legal or what rules are in place. These rules help enforce social order and must be good. The last stage is post-conventional morality, which, just like all the others, has two stages. The first is social contract orientation. If you remember from your civics or government class, a social contract is an agreement between members of society. People agree to cooperate for societal benefit. For example, if you live in the United States of America, you agree to follow the laws of the land, and in return, the state offers to provide protection and opportunities. During this stage, moral reasoning is still focused on rules and laws. But there is an acknowledgement that sometimes moral and legal law can differ, and in some situations, it might be moral to break the law. The last stage is universal ethics orientation. Morality is now more complex. The individual realizes that moral reasoning is complicated and that not all laws may be good. Here an individual has their own thoughts and opinions on different matters and behaviors. Morality here is driven by internal principles. Individuals will look at the entire impact of a decision to see if it's moral and not just take it at its face value. Now some have criticized Kohlberg's theory since Kohlberg based his theory on a longitudinal study where the population was all men. One of those who criticized Kohlberg's theory was Carol Gilligan. She ran her own study that included both men and women in the population and sample. She used similar conditions that Kohlberg did to see if his results would remain true with other populations. What she found was that his original results did not apply to women. The reason why was because boys traditionally tend to opt for justice, while women focused on interpersonal relationships. So we can see that morality is complex, and we can't just put one model or theory to all people. Depending on what environmental factors you've been exposed to, what cultures, religions, what what your gender is, all these different aspects may shape your concept of morality and change how it develops over time. And just like that, we're done with another topic review video. Now you know the drill, answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. And if you found value in this video, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's a great way to say thank you for the video and support the channel. And if you need more help with AP Psychology, check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that'll help you with everything AP Psychology related. It'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, thank Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mr. Sin and I'll see you next time online.